Good Thursday evening. It is December 14, 2023. I don't know why I almost said December 24th or 25th. I don't know what the hell was going on there, but I want to welcome everybody back in to the live show. I hope everybody's doing well, and I think that we're going to have a pretty fun night uh, this evening. I have a, a special guest here I'm going to bring in here in a minute, uh, Tom CPU, that is just a uh, Karen Reed and Turtle, Turtle Boy activist. I actually met him in November at Turtle Boy's hearing, I think it was November 1st, and uh, it was a great opportunity to talk with him. We exchanged, exchanged phone numbers. We never had the opportunity to talk, um, but I reached out to him via Facebook, and I said, hey, we got to do something here because you uh, you know all things uh, Karen Reed. But before we do that and get into the show, I just want to show you uh, something here that you can do as we kind of navigate the night. If you'd like to support the LTL True Crime Podcast, I have my link there up, tagged up above to support. And this is uh, it's a site called Buy Me a Coffee. You go down here to this section here, you can buy me a coffee here in support of the show. Or if you want to join one of the memberships, you can go that here on this route too and join one of the monthly memberships. So that is my pitch for the night. Uh, and if you, like I said, you want to send any donos, it gives... Uh, 95% of control to the creator, which is really nice because YouTube likes to take all our money and swallow it up with percentages and taxes, and that's no fun. But I'm not going to wait too much longer here. Let's bring in Tom and uh, and get on with the show here. So, Tom, how's it going, buddy? Wonderful. How are you? I'm, I'm well. I'm well. Uh, I want to just thank you, you know, for coming over here, uh, you know, coming over, joining LTL True Crime and talking a little Karen Reed because I know that... Um, you know, you're kind of an expert on this. I've watched a lot of your, <laughs> I've watched a lot of the shows that you've been on. And, uh, you know, you're one of the, the strongest advocates out there. And I got to commend you uh, in this free Karen Reed move, movement and the, the support of Turtle Boy. I really think that's great. Oh, I, I'm just one of many. Okay. There, there's a lot of people and I just do my part. And there are just as many people doing their part in yeah. other ways, all doing what they can. To free Karen, free Aiden, free the Cant Nine, and stop at this point because it doesn't need to go on anymore. This just got to stop right now. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. And every day we're finding out something new. You know, just recently, what December fifth, we have the DOJ probe into Karen Reed's case. You know, Morsi's trying to get it out of uh, out of Massachusetts, and uh, it just it just makes you think. You know, what the hell is going on? You know, <laughs> if you did your job, why would you want? to move it why would you not want to show it the whole world this is what i've done be proud of what you did this is this is what i've created i've created this you know michelle Wu is pretty happy about the email she created you know she's <laughs> it's just it gets crazy hey Not but me. before i have a presentation tonight before we get kind of into that me and tom probably will spend about an hour two hours an hour and a half two hours if that's good with you know if you got that time tonight tom so we got a lot to go through and you know we're gonna get into just some real sticking points that really stuck out to me when i first started 
you know, hearing about Karen's case and, and really looking at all the legal documents. But what I wanted to ask you first is, one, how did you get involved? Like, how did you find out about this? And how did you become kind of the uh, the activists out there? I mean, you're really out on the front lines as much, you know, as much as I've seen you out there. And what really got you motivated to do that? <clears throat> um, well, I found out like a majority of us did through Aiden. He broke the story. Now, the story wasn't necessarily um, out there, we'll say. It was uh, in some form. It was out there, not not to the way or to the masses that he has the ability to reach. So when when he did the story, I'm like, no way. Like, it, no. Um, my background, I am former law enforcement. Mm. So everything I'm taught in the academy, everything I'm taught after that, all the in-service time, all the, all the classes, all the reading, everything I read said that, like, this can't happen. What, what he's saying can't happen. And he's, he's the first one to say, here's a document, here's another document, check this out, go here, look at this, and everything checked out. And as he's progressed with this story, the more angrier or the more vested I can say that this is wrong. This is this is wrong. And if this was you, I'd fight just as hard. And if it was the the neighbor, I don't know, I'd fight just as hard because it's wrong. Yeah. It, it, you kind of hope that there's enough people in this world, like we're gonna have Saturday. I mean, um, Sunday at the march, enough people out there to say, hey, listen, this is this is our opinion, and we're allowed to say what we want. That takes Aiden out of it, and that takes the can't deny out of it. Now let's get back to the Karen Reed thing. We have faith in our law enforcement. We absolutely do. We love, we love our cops. Of all places, Boston, we love 100%. our cops. We love 100%. them. With that being said, we love the cops that do their jobs correctly to the best of their abilities, and there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them doing that right now. No one's going to argue that. The, the few that have made mistakes, like they don't caution off the crime scene. Like just there's so many mistakes that have been made. We don't, we won't tolerate that. I mean, the Patriots lose a, lose a game. They lose a season. The head coach is going for a walk. That's pretty tough. You know, the Red Sox make it to the world series, lose it. You're gone. There's no mercy in this town. No. Austin, this is, you know, I mean, we expect people to be working at a higher level. We, we, don't, we don't demand it, but we expect it because we think the cream rises to the top. Yeah. Not the politicians. The politicians, though, shouldn't rise to the top. People with the best qualifications should. I just think it's great now that, you know, how life and everything with us has progressed so much. You know, I'm talking about, like, the power of the Internet. You know, how can you imagine if we didn't have the Internet in this case? to to get the truth out there of what's actually going on how how this would just be you would you would see this literally like and i think back to my childhood i had three stations on my my tv on the the rotary dial yeah you would see this as a spot on like five or seven news at five o'clock it would yep. be karen reed and it would flip and you would hear maybe a couple weeks later karen reed she wouldn't be able to get the opportunity that she's getting she'd be in she'd be in jail convicted i mean and going away for 30 years if it wasn't in the boston herald it wasn't news remember them days yeah the, the early 90s if the herald was it you know the globe and you can't trust the the big papers anymore you just can't unfortunately i i i haven't i can't i i, I look at the headlines every so often i'll go and you know mosey over to the headlines and read this newspaper and this one no they're not it's they're thin there's nothing in them. All it's the funny. online. I, it's just funny that Bob was saying this because right before I came on the show, I was thinking about this because I know what the date is coming up. But Bob wants to point out, it says December 16th is the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. And now uh, Massachusetts is a police state. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. You know, a couple, couple old guys threw some tea over on the – into the harbor and, and caused a big, uh, you know, big ruckus. So imagine, imagine if like a couple hundred billboards went up across the state. Yeah. All on the same day. 
right before election day. Imagine that. That would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> 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 but you know it's um like i said you know it's i'm glad that we have this space i'm glad that the internet has progressed the way it is you know it's it's used in so many terrible ways now but there's really a lot of good in it too where we can come together in this type of community get the truth out there and um you know i'll be honest with you i got a lot of shit for the stance that i have on this you know oh you see law enforcement i don't I love law enforcement, but just like what Tom is saying, if someone's not doing their job correctly and someone's not doing it by the book and there's something shady going on, you need to peel back that layer. I wouldn't even fucking care if it if they, if it wasn't police. Just say it was nine or ten people in a house and something like this happened. You know, I would want the layers peeled back and I would want this looked into. Doesn't how, make sense. How, how can you not ask that of what we're paying for? Right. Right. We're paying for a service, paying our taxes, going to these police officers to do the job of protecting us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's pull up this little presentation I put together. I think the 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 crowd will love this. We'll get through and do a little review. And I'd love to just hear kind of Tom's uh, you know, perspective on a lot of this stuff. So if anybody doesn't know, uh, we'll we'll pull up here. <clears throat> Let me just bring up my screen. So tonight we're gonna talk about. Uh, Karen Reed and John O'Keefe. Um, John O'Keefe was a Boston police officer and the state of Massachusetts is accusing Karen Reed of uh, essentially running over John and, and leaving the scene of an accident. She's now been charged with second degree murder, uh, motor vehicle manslaughter and leaving the scene of a collision in connection with John O'Keefe's death. And we have a picture of Karen there. She's center in the middle with her two attorneys, Alan Jackson and David uh, Yanetti, which I think are, I mean, that's to me the dream fucking team right there. Tom, what do you think? I, I could, I, I could not do better. I mean, she picked these people out, so that just tells you the, the, uh, the you know, the intelligence level we're starting with. So from yeah. there upwards, and but those those two attorneys, I, I don't think you get any any higher. Like that's the top of the food chain there, because they're they're dynamite, like perfect perfect people. Yeah, I mean, to me. Just seeing the facts that they bring out, just seeing the evidence that they bring out on their side for the defense. I mean, I think that this is going to be probably one of the easiest cases to exonerate someone and have them walk out, you know, and get the justice they deserve. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a and, and hopefully we get into the real investigation that needs to happen here. Um, and I and I think that we, you know, we could be getting close to that with all the exposure talking about this uh, and, and hopefully this just gets into the the legal system. I don't know if it's going to, but hopefully. Can I, can I give you one, one good piece of sure. help? Maybe like hold your hope on to this type of, yeah. thing? well, you'll never find an attorney to sue another attorney. Cause that just doesn't never happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't think you'll find a, an attorney that will go against We'll say the prosecution or the district attorney as hard as need be. Because they still have to work in this town, yeah. right? So what do you do? You pull in somebody really expensive from out of town. Mm -hmm. So I think Alan Jackson's role here, right, is lighting them bridges on fire. Yep. I think he's going to burn this this city down hard. David Unetti can't do it because he's working with these he's people. He's working here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... I think by by calling in Alan Jackson, that opens up a whole nother avenue of people and things that that can be brought to the table without extra, extra effort. hundred percent, hundred percent. I completely agree. So when I was looking at the case, you know, just some original sticking facts with me, I call them kind of the sticking facts. Uh, obviously the 62 feet at 24.2 miles an hour in the snow, you know, I, th I think a lot of people have to understand if they've never been there, uh, this is kind of an uphill grade I, and it might even be more than 20 to th 30 degrees. I'm just kind of going off what I remember and it's uphill and she supposedly backed up and as you back up the road curves. <laughs> so they're saying, you know, and I was saying to Tom, uh, earlier before we went live, I said, she must've been one hell of a stunt driver. To, to do and, and keep in mind there was snow there was snow on the ground it was whiteout conditions um 
And then obviously we have at 2.27 a.m., Jennifer McCabe, uh, Google's Haas, line, Haas Long to Die in Cold, that fo- that famous line, you know, Turtle Boy has that shirt, uh, hours before the 911 call. And then we go into uh, after the incident, the Alberts family sell the house and the dog. And you were actually reminding me of something earlier. What else? What was one of the other things, Tom? He refinished his cellar after having it refinished three years prior. So, like, I don't know if it needed to be done for the sell the house for the loss of 50000 because he's he sold it for 50000 less. Right. You know, so Andy redid the cellar again after three years prior. Interesting. So, yeah. Interesting. So, <laughs> we have John's uh, Alpo Health data that suggests that he traveled away from Karen's SUV that night and uh, entered the house. And I believe that there was some oscillations that made it look like he went up three flights of stairs. So that shows that he actually went into the house. I know, Tom, do you know a little bit more about that? Could you shed some light on it? Yeah. The, um, the timeline that I have in regards to John's Apple health data, if you look at the health, the Apple stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And you, don't, you don't look at anything else. Well, it, it happened at 1221 to 1223. Colin called for a ride at 1233. Yeah. So it, the time that shows John up and down the stairs is the same time that the timeline shows Colin being in the house. That's troubling because yeah. we, we were told Colin wasn't in the house. Right. You know, going back to those changing narratives that we have that facts don't change, but they say Colin wasn't in the house, but at 1230, he calls for a ride. So Yeah. The, it, it always seems that too, that the narrative always changes from the state in this case. And we're going to get a little bit, little further in that and uh i actually have the glare in the chat i actually asked him if he wanted to join the uh, up on the panel uh this afternoon i'm gonna drop the link for him glare if you want to jump in you're welcome to jump up on the panel we'd love to hear you up here as well um so yeah um we'll move on here we'll get a little bit more into these subcategories some of the things that really stuck with me so we have karen reads uh so we have karen how the taillight got cracked we can show a little bit of that i actually made a little video today And I'm going to actually drop that probably in the next couple of days. But I kind of uh, superimposed and zoomed in on actually her car hitting the back of the um, the uh, of John's car when she's backing up leaving. Uh, And then obviously we're going to hear a little bit of Karen uh, being absolutely hysterical on the 911 call. And to me, it it just doesn't seem like act. You know, everybody's oh she's acting. There's no way. I mean that's true and true. True and true. And then we obviously had the the recent vote in Canton. Uh, Canton now uh, has voted. They want the independent audit of the Canton Police Department, which is a fantastic win for the uh, the uh, the town of Canton. Is it town or city? Town. Town. Yeah. And then just when I started reading through the report as well, too, John's body shows no signs of being ran over, uh, no bruising, no tire marks, no broken bones besides skull fractures. And then, in my opinion, uh, you know the injuries are consistent with a fight. You had a bruised fist, two black eyes, skull fractures, scratches on the arm, which we think, which we know, uh, came from the dog. (laughs) The dog attack inside the house. And then recently, December 5th, 2023, the DOJ opens up an investigation into Karen Reed's probe. And uh, it's funny, you know, Morsi doesn't want this. He wants it transferred out of Massachusetts. It makes you kind of think there. Why? Uh, Now that the DOJ is involved. You know, what do you think on that, Tom? That's interesting. I mean, I, and again, <clears throat> if you're doing your job, you don't get investigated by the Federal Bureau of Mist- Investigations. Mm-hmm. I, I think they were here to investigate the Sandra Birchmore, where you had <clears throat> a young, pregnant, pretty girl groomed by four different police officers. All of them had intercourse with her prior to her turning 18 years old. Uh, one of them got her pregnant left left her dwelling to go visit his wife in the hospital her she never moved after the after he visited i have problems with that i think the fbi has problems with that i think they were looking at everybody who's involved which happens to be the same people in the karen reed case can you imagine 
if the FBI was looking at this thing when they when this whole thing went down? Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> oh, please. Right. All right, we'll move on here. So I want to talk about, this is kind of the sub category I want to get into. And you went, oh, I love that you have all these photos because it kind of shows and maybe you can explain what kind of tipped off to you. So we, we're going to talk about, obviously, the first theory was the three-point turn theory by the state. And then that narrative changed. And I think they went to something else. And then it changed again. And then now the final narrative that the state has is Karen backed up at 62 feet. 24.2 it's 24.2 miles an hour tom so it's you gotta get that point two in there uh in a in a blizzard and on a curved road and like we talked about before on a graded surface on a graded surface it's got to be 20 i think it's actually probably more than 20 or 30 degrees yeah there's no doubt about it um so we have the three photos here and you actually made a point about and i'll i'll enlarge this so we can kind of zoom around in here yeah. So let's talk about the first photo here. This to me would probably be the next morning. No, that's that right there is probably the, from the Canton Police Department, I'd say. Okay. Early. Like that's an early photo of the scene. So it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> like 10 feet of snow on the ground. It was Got very it. little snow. And at six o'clock, that actually looks like more snow than then I'm even thinking at six o'clock. Right. All right. So the hydrant is important and the flagpole is important. Right. Because they said, I'm sorry, Jennifer okay. said and Matt said that they saw Karen's car at the flagpole and at the hydrant. But if you're looking then, you tell me what window they looked out of that they saw that. From the right. picture to the left, as is. Show me where they saw. What can you see the can you see the breezeway entrance on the left hand side? No. Can you see the front door? <laughs> but yet they have witness <laughs> statements saying they saw Dukes of Hazard in the front yard and her doing this and her parked here and her leaving. But yet neither one of us can see the front door of the, that house. Yeah. It supposedly came out of. Let me ask you a question, Tom. In all of your life, okay, let's say you give a buddy a ride, a family member a ride, whatever. You, you, you're going to drop someone off. When have you ever pulled up six or seven car lengths past the house and say, all right, buddy, get out and walk to the door? Usually you pull in what? In the driveway or right in front of the house where the door is? Karen? Like, people don't realize how far down the street this is. This is... Yeah, far up like this. This, yeah. this is road here. Off. Right, you're not high. getting dropped off down that way. No way. Where that where that vehicle is, the, that's a police officer vehicle. Or I don't know what it is. SUV. Right. But that's where Karen originally pulled up and dropped John off, and he ran down the driveway along the edge of the cars. Between the garage and the house is a breezeway, and right. there's a doorway. That's the front door. When they pulled up, somebody that is in the room above that entrance there's a room above that upstairs like mm -hmm. yep right someone said there's a car here to alert the people downstairs that hey someone pulled up that's when karen pulled up john went over ran in the entrance ryan nagel came in behind karen and karen being thoughtful and considerate pulled forward nagel went and i think nagel pulled in the driveway and talked to his sister and she said no 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 i don't need a ride now go home and she ended up getting a ride home anyway and Nagel states that he didn't even see John at the car. Nope. But he went, he drove by Karen, who was parked at the flagpole area where she pulled up. Right. He drove by this way. Yeah. Hands he 10 to 2. Point. It was just Karen in the car. No one else because the right. interior light was on. So John was already in the house. Yep. Yep. So then we had this photo here. You're like, oh, I'm glad you got that in there. And you can see kind of this area where they cleared out. Yep. So nope. what Tom was saying was, Karen, here's the flagpole. Karen would have pulled up over here. Nagel drove by in this direction. And when he he looked over, he just saw Karen by herself. I think he said that the interior light was on, too. Yeah. 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 That's why he saw her hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. Right. Yep. I mean, come on. It's like, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean, Tom? Come on. <laughs> Listen, that they're thinking, they're really thinking that when we can't put this stuff together. They really think that. 
Like, this is not common sense. This is elementary school common sense. This isn't grown-up common sense. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's show let's show this. Um, I got the uh, the video of Turtle Boy kind of recreating the scene, and I I, I want to go through this. I think it'd be really great, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get to everything else. But if we don't, I'd love to have you come back on here. We'll do this again. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. All right, let's pull up the video here because this might take a little while to get through, but I don't mind. I mean, this is all good stuff here. All right, so this was done uh, a couple of days ago. I think it's the full the full video from Turtle Boy. And uh, I'm sure he doesn't mind, you know, you know, he's been on the show. Yeah, I think he said you can use my stuff anytime. So no problem there. But we'll we'll pull this up and uh, and watch this. I think he did this last spring or summer. And this is really good. Tell me to pause if you want to pause, Tom. I have no no problem. I mean, he he's measuring. He's yeah. actually getting the again. He's going out of the way to get the information. What do you not think channel five, not channel seven. Um, just how ridiculous it is uh, so, keep in mind, Aaron, so that th this is what i want to give everybody perspective if you haven't been to the house you haven't seen the house he's walking in the direction where karen's car pulled up and look how far he's already had to walk and you're going to see the can the, ca the house to the left come into view and you're going to see the flagpole i mean look how long he's, he's walked already right here we'll stop back at the suv now this is the neighbor's house right here to the right um, and by the way, I just want to do this really quick. Let me just get this in so I recognize it because I saw a few donations come through. I, I totally appreciate that. We have uh, Funky. Thank you so much for the 25. Tom, thank you so much for the five. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Didn't have to do that. Uh, all right, let's keep playing here. So I want everybody to just keep this in mind. <laughs> So he's going to measure out 62 feet right now. And you can see he's walking up. going to demonstrate it? Uphill. Um, just how ridiculous it is. Um, so keep in mind, Karen Reed, when she got here, she parked over there. She dropped him off in the driveway, right? And then she allegedly brought him over here. Like she, she, she pulled over, like, pulled over here to like wait for him to text back because Ryan Nago was the end or she wanted to be rude. And then he didn't come for 10 minutes, so she bounced. But they all saw him here, right? So that's where they decided to put the body right here. Because <laughs> that's where Ryan Nagel is. Right? So I tell, that's where she was seen sitting. So basically, what we're going to try to see is if we can... They said she got to... Tw First of all, why the hell would she pull all the way up there in front of that house? Right. So let me get like what what's the theory here? That so John got out of the car right here alive. She first of all she drops him off. Why would she drop him off here instead of at the driveway like a you know a normal human being? Right. John's gonna get out here and walk all the way diagonally across the lawn. Makes no you know, sense, right? right? And I want to give everybody a little little teaser here because the ironic thing why he's doing this. Guess who comes home? The neighbor cop to the left that had the the camera that's pointing right there as he's doing this you see him pull into the driveway how ironic is that and he said oh the body the 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 um the ring camera didn't work that night I, it's deleted that would show everything tom tom it would show everything he's got three different cameras on the house it would show everything imagine if the house to the left at 34th Fairview had some Arlo cameras that's currently being um, discussed about in court right now. <laughs> the judge wanted the, the Google camera, Google Nest. Document. Really? Yeah. I didn't hear about that. The judge said they, she agreed to it. She agreed to um, the defense getting that footage, but the cameras that he had were Arlo cameras. They weren't Google Nest cameras. They're Arlo's. So now they have to go back and make another hole <laughs> that says Allo instead of Google. And and how, you know, and uh, is this all of a sudden the, the, the camera's going to get broken or, or what's going to happen here, Tom? You know, geez, they're all going to look at it like the day before the trial and go, geez, I didn't <laughs> know that was on there. Wow. I yeah. Guess, I don't remember that happening. Yeah, I don't know. I, I Again. Unfortunately, this is happening in Massachusetts. Yeah. 
All right, we'll keep playing through here. And if she pulled ahead, like I heard you say the other night, right in front of that ring camera. Yeah, exactly. Her, Lara so. says, "In why is the prosecution relying on expertise of a ten-year-old ring cameras?" Yeah, ex absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Good point. So, see this guy's over here, like this. So there's, see up there, that's sixty-two feet. So this is where John O'Keefe was found, right here. His body was found, and they said that Karen Reed came from sixty-two feet back at twenty-four miles an hour in reverse and banged him somehow ended up on here so this is this is 62 feet we're gonna mark it off right here all right boom all right that's a that's and far away that's, feet <laughs> that's far okay. and see the hill and you can see the wait you can hill. see the curve there's the curve of the road go ahead no yeah see how he's looking down because that road pitches down because I've walked it a hundred times. Yep. That road pitches down, and you can see the curve right there. And he's going to demonstrate when he backs up. Watch what happens. Because everybody's going to be like, holy shit. It's impossible. Right by your back tire. Right. So we're going to say, I mean. Yeah. Aram says this theory is absurd. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can go 24 miles an hour in reverse by the time I reach that point right there. And that's crazy. 24 miles an hour and you're gonna have to keep going to slow down oh, so she, she ran them over too so drew says i have arlo cameras depending on the user subscription will depend on how long a video is stored they may get nothing so there you go something's gonna come up i'm telling you we got nothing right now so anything yeah. and then Gemma cape looked out the window because they have to i guess they were <coughs> sitting on one of those windows and Gemma cape looks out the window and by the way see that gate back there yeah, the gate. That's where they brought the body out. Yeah. Oh, Jill, thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate that. Right here. Okay. We try to bring the truth. We we bring the truth through the legal documents and the investigations. No one's seeing it. Right. They're not gonna see it over there, right? No. Nope. Not seeing it. That's gonna block it. Got the tree, you know, the bushes over there. He pulled his body. Boom. It's the shortest possible way. They brought it right from the backyard. That's what they did. So we're gonna see. I mean, how absurd is this? So she, why the hell would she be all the way over there? That's directly in front of 32 Fairview. Why would they do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. You, you explain that one to me. 32. So she, I mean, what's she just sitting? Like, they want us to believe that she's just sitting over there it doing what? Sense. And then so John got out of the car right here. He's like, okay, I'm just going to stand right here and let you run me over. Right. Crazy woman. So it's snow and the tires, it's going to make a lot of noise, the tires, right? In the snow. Yeah. Obviously, not snow right now, so we can't perfectly. Read. And then. Christina, thank you so much for the dono on buying me a coffee. I appreciate the five bucks. Thank you. She's going to hit him. Well, he's what? Holding this cocktail glass right here. Why isn't he going in the house? And how does he end up over there? Well, he ended up like right here. Okay, yeah. So we put it like, you know, I'm trying to do it right where. I mean, even the distance way over here. Yeah, I mean, because 12 feet, that's like 12 feet, right? So That's not right even 12. I mean, yeah. it's a basketball hoop plus two. That would be like right here. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. 12, so maybe it wasn't 12 feet. Maybe they're just saying 12 feet. I don't, I don't even know if you can get 12 feet. Oh, yeah. But how the hell did his body get to right there? Right. I mean, you explain that to me. So we're going to see. Can she even get, like, so this dude just stood here. Oh, and that's the thing, too. Supposedly when she hit him after backing up in the snow, up a hill, on the graded surface, on a curve, she hit him, and he flew from the street over a snowbank, right? It was over a snowbank, 12 feet in the air, right? And landed next to the flagpole. <laughs> Tom, I mean, I don't even think you could do this in a movie. This would not be my excuse. I couldn't. No. no. Well, the truth needs to be told. That's There shouldn't be any excuses. Can you imagine poor little Karen, all four feet tall of her, 100 pounds, if you're lucky, fighting these people that we're all fighting again? We're all, yeah. seeing, I won't say fighting, that's not the right word. We're all um, at odds with, we, we differ, our opinions differ. I couldn't imagine. It's crazy. 12 feet over the snowbank. All right. All right. We'll see if he can do it. We'll see if it can happen. Think, look at, by the way, look how far away the car is. You see somebody coming at you in reverse right back, like that? And hearing it. Time to get away, right? Oh yeah. Just like go, just jump out of the way. 
Yeah. Uh, you're standing, unless he's what, standing in the middle of the road? Is that what you're saying? In, in that case, how did he go to over here? Right? Like, so if you're standing right here and the car comes at you, I see one more teller is gone. <laughs> you're going to catch Don't that. Pick Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to do a test out right now. Okay. And we're you're, doing... you're, and I just to stop this here too. This right here, if anybody doesn't know, this is that camera position I'm talking about. This camera position would have got everything because it's wide. See, if you can see it, it can see you. Right. It's wide enough. We saw everything, but magically, that that footage doesn't doesn't exist. How could that have happened? <laughs> want me to stand right here? Um, yeah. Tom, do you want to explain who lives there? That would be the deputy chief of Canton. That's like the number two person in charge of everything. It's amazing how that happens, huh? How it disappears. Small world. Such a small, small world. Small world. Small world. I mean, that took him a little bit to walk. Yes. You know, that's not a couple car lengths away. Yeah. That's like. It's a distance. It's like seven car lengths easily. I know it's like kind of a weird random number, but. Yeah, it's like Copland. It's like fucking Copland. Claire got it right. It's like yep. fucking Copland. It really is. <clears throat> Man, that's that's exactly it too. All right. I'll watch now, that tonight. <laughs> keep in mind, just for anybody that's coming in, new into this case, this would have been in January. It was snowing. It got to whiteout conditions. It was a blizzard, and this supposedly took place. Now, this is a clear spring or probably summer afternoon, probably early summer, if I'm looking at it here. That that uh, Turtle Boy did this this experiment, and uh, he's going to have a clear road here. So now you got to put the elements in there: snow, ice, all that shit. No, nothing's probably been plowed at this point. Um, you know, the snow's just accumulating. So keep that in the back of your mind. So watch how he does this with a clear road and how fucked up it is. <laughs> <clears throat> and and. Uh, and Another thing, too, keep in mind, when this goes to trial, I'm going to tell you right now, Karen's defense team is going to have this all mapped out. You're going to see everything. You're going to see a demonstration. You're going to see how it's not possible. This could have happened. I'm telling you, they're going to have it all together. <clears throat> all right, here Get we ready. go. Yep. Lexus SUV. I don't know the model number. Do you know the 530. model? LS 530. 530. LX. About the same size as this is Aiden's vehicle. I think hers was like the next size up. I oh, think it was it, bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. I think his three quarters, which hers was full. Now there's the curve in the road. <laughs> And he fucking went over there. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. No snow. You're on the curb. Am I really? Yeah, you're on the grass. No. You're still, your back tire's up. You gotta drive. There you go. <laughs> Blair. And sober, too. That's a good point. Turtle Boy sober. How fast did he go? 14. 14. 14 wow. Holy 14. shit. That was as fast. I mean, anything. I got to 13. I'm like scared. Yeah. Out of control. At yeah. 14. That looked fast to me, too. How fast? Like really fast? 
coming at me pretty fast. I kind of jumped a little bit out of the way. Wicked Sova. Yeah, yeah, yeah right up on Sova. it. You can see your tire mark. Where? Oh, I see your tire mark? Yeah, right here. That's where your tire Oh, was. yeah. But there was no tire marks when she did. She's better at this. She's really good. <laughs> I mean, it's a one in a million shot because there's an angle too. She would have had to cut the wheel it's exactly. Not, yeah, it's like here, it comes at you fast. Like, yeah. How do you? Let me try that again. Okay. Let me try it again. Do you want to send up the drone? Is that okay? You want to? Are you in a rush? No, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Probably the fucking state police coming to get Aiden. <laughs> Fuck. All right, take two. And that road's pretty well traveled too. I remember that. It does constant traffic on that road. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> big development down there. Yeah. All good. So you're going to pull back up to the mark. I mean, that's far enough where you're taking a step aside. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, Greg says this attempt is worse. <laughs> oh, did he go yet? He's going now. Oh, I'll get his title. All right, here we go. Yeah, there's a lot of traffic down there. <laughs> even but i'm just thinking to myself even if that i was standing there okay just the back of me standing there i would think if i got hit i would just bounce off the i wouldn't go under the car i would just bounce off i'd probably get hurt my back my leg would get hurt but you were saying something about the um i was watching one of the streams about the tail light the tail light crack because it was the opposite side right no <clears throat> explain um... that to me Okay, if you if you put yourself on the driveway right now, mm -hmm. you take a right hand turn to where Aiden's car was, right, and you're walking towards Karen's car, right. Your right arm is where. Okay, say it again. If I'm in the drive, if I'm in the driveway looking where Aiden oh, was, oh, you're oh, in the driveway. Yep. And you're walking. My towards the house or walking? You're going to take a right out of the driveway. You're walking out of the driveway, taking yep. a right to where Aiden just was, down right. the street, in front of Kelleher's house. You're going to walk right in front of 34 Fairview. Imagine this. You're going to yep. walk, leave the driveway. You're going to walk right in front of 34 Fairview. What side is your right arm on? Towards the house. What injuries were John's? Injuries on no, his injuries are on the right hand right side. side. If if you're if, if the car's coming at you're you, right. you, the first thing that's getting clipped is your left side. Right, you're exactly. out. Exactly. Right. Right. 
injuries are on the wrong side, people. Right. Like it's not it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right? Twilight zone. Do, 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 do. But am I no, am I wrong? Like no, you're right. Think about that. If you if he was walking <laughs> down the driveway and he's going right. towards Karen's vehicle, his right side's to the house. Right. And if she's coming to hit him, it's going to be his left side. Left side. But all he's his injuries are on the right. Which he's going to put a shoulder into it and stop right. the car? No. It was protected. Right. He's bailing. He's. <laughs> this is the side that gets injured. This is the side that got chewed up. This is the side that should be busted, broken, Correct. chewed up, mangled. We can get into that later on. Oh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to show that. But that's that's what I was saying. Yep. No, I got you now. How was it? Seventeen. <laughs> new record. I mean, I can't even. Like, I went two up on that one, and uh, we'll see. I mean, dude, it's it gets scary. Like, if somebody is like, I couldn't imagine having a person there and doing that. Like, that's fucking. Like, it can't be manslaughter. Like, if she did that on purpose, which she didn't, obviously, because she's not, you have to be a fucking psycho. Right. right? That's all the time I'm thinking that. Like, you got to be fucking psycho to do something like that. Sure. So, no fucking way. I mean, that's seven. That, would, that, that seemed fast. Yeah. I don't think it could have gone fast. Enough. I mean, I, dude, fucking reckless in the snow, too. Think of how loud that would have been. Yeah, and she would have pulled forward and then do that, and he's just okay. standing here. And my car can accelerate faster than hers, too. Right. So, you know, we'll see. And what would he be doing just standing there? I don't know. I guess he just wants to get hit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he just, he just wants to get I'm going to go take a picture of this guy. He wanted me to okay. All right. So we got we got that there. I just want to demonstrate that for everybody so they can get a bigger understanding of you know what that road looked like if you've never been down there and you know a lot of people here that do watch me are not from massachusetts so they've never been there so i wanted to give them that perspective like backing up on a curved road a grade it just there's no fucking way in the snow drunk of all things drunk drunk <laughs> it's just no fucking way all right let me bring my presentation back up all right let me do this <clears throat> So we talked about backing up. We have, uh, this was the first theory, the three point turn. So I want to read a little bit of this for everybody. And then the narrative changed after. This is a state prosecution's theory. First was the three point turn. There's actually a video out there. I think someone did of it. I watched it this afternoon. It's pretty cool. And there's just no fucking way. Uh, there's just rock, no rock side of vehicle. If that's yeah. the case. Again. Yeah. So it goes on to say, uh, this is from uh, GBH. Uh, Legal analyst goes on to say, so the police uh, hypothesized that Reed had inadvertently struck O'Keefe with his car when she did three point turn to leave the scene where she dropped him off and then she struck him, didn't look back to see if anything happened and went home. Again, the theory was essentially reckless and negligent, not intent. And the theory was now, to be fair, with some circumstantial and direct evidence did point to her involvement. First, she, <clears throat> excuse me, she had broken, had a broken tail light when she came back to pick him up or find him and she couldn't explain when and where it had been broken. And the second, she made uh, several uh, inculpatory statements. She told her friends, did I hit him? Could have I hit him? Uh, and then she made similar statements, even more empathetic to a Canton firefighter. So ultimately prosecutors charged with three crimes, manslaughter, motor vehicle homicide, and the crime of leaving a scene after a collision that caused death. Again, I need to emphasize that theory here. An operating assumption was reckless, but she uh, consciously disregarded a risk by doing the three-point turn in a blizzard conditions and not looking back. There's no way. <laughs> That's what they're saying. So that was the first theory. Then that didn't stick. So the state went, well, we're going to go back and look at this again. And I forget what the second theory was. But then they ultimately landed on 62 feet at 24.2 miles an hour. Look at the road. <laughs> uh, the, the famous Haas Long to die in cold. So uh, as we see here, McCabe. Sent that text message at 2.25 and, and 11 seconds a.m. Uh, and then it 
magically said that it, it wasn't there. You know, that's what state says magically wasn't there. Uh, what do you think, Tom? You want, all right, well, go ahead. <laughs> uh oh, he's going to just rubbing his eyes. You know how I told you I was prior law enforcement? Right. Hated the job. So I saved up my money. And in 97, I opened a computer company. And then a y Y2K hit, and I did pretty good. So I've been involved with technology from like AOL version 1.0 for DOS. Nice. Commodore 64 stuff. Like the internet functions today as it did when it was created you send a request the request gets routed goes to the, the the host gets the data and gets sent back through the same path that path from a to b which i'm sure mr mccabe can tell you is it's factual it's like getting from your house to the highway you can only get there one way right it's factual right for you to, for you to end up on the highway from your house that path you took is factual Every right, every left, every every street light you went on is tracked from your house to the highway. The same thing happens on the internet. So when you pull your phone open and you say, okay, I'm going to go to Yahoo, and you're at Yahoo, and you say, I'm going to go to uh, brand new Red Sox. Yeah. That path from eight from you to Red Sox and back is is non-negotiable. It's It's a factual thing. They, they must have all that on that search that she did at that point in time. You would think. I think that's why the expert that the state called in to try and help them because they can't refute those facts. It's a factual thing. Again, it, it, it had to happen. For you to get data, you had to request the data. When you get the, make the request, it goes into a database file, goes and gets it. Brings it back to you. It gets put together back on your phone. Yeah. She qu she queried that. It ended up on her phone from her query. It happened. 227 happened. Factual. That's what I think. 100%. All right. Let's pull up the 911 call. I know there's been a lot of debate about this. You know, the, 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 the side that sides with uh, Canton says that, oh, well, you know, she's Karen's acting. You know, she's she's just uh, this is an, an act. You know, she's she's playing it out for her best Oscar. But I don't know, Tom, when I hear it, that's not acting. No, that's no. Someone being hysterical. That's not acting. All right. Let's pull this up real quick. I actually did a video to try to clean up the video, uh, the, the audio a little bit here uh, about a week and a half ago. But we'll play it from this position here. And you can hear Karen in the background. And again, this is difficult to listen to. I get it. I understand it. Uh, you know, I don't like listening to these things either. But it's, uh, it's, it's a fact. And it's part of the case. So we're going to play it here. I'll go back. I should go back to the whole thing here. Let's bring this up. I mean, th this call, okay? Even though Karen didn't make this call, this call has Haunting. all sorts of questions. All sorts of questions. And got nothing to do with Karen. Hmm. All right, let's play. Um, yes, I need someone to see 34 Smith, uh, 34th year before we get now, there's a man passed out in the snow. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why he's doing that. I can see that. Okay, that's Karen. I know, I know. John. Where's my head? I don't know if he's going to carry I think that was Karen that screams, I'm freezing, right? He's freezing. He's freezing. Got it. Hello. 
wipe is just creepy. I'm a little confused. How did that call come to light? It was a recording, correct? It was a voicemail recording? This is what happened. Okay, tell me. The three ladies are in the in the vehicle driving around looking for john karen's in the back seat she's beating up john's phone calling him calling him calling him calling him calling him go to voicemail she hangs up she calls him again goes to voicemail and hangs up one of these times she calls him and she sees him she drops the phone (gasps) and use the call connects to his voicemail and what you hear is what we just heard i know that it's a recording from that morning that was sent to voicemail wow see again i'm a little bit behind in some of this stuff i know like the basic stuff and that's why i wanted to have you come over i'll you know i'll be transparent with the audience i'm just really catching up i didn't know that yeah Imagine i that. thought this was recorded like someone recorded i thought it was a recording of the nine one like someone got a copy of the nine one one call Matter of fact, I just heard something for the first time. Sure. And uh, of all these times I hear it, it doesn't make it any easier to hear as mm-hmm. much as the first time it was. Right. At the beginning, you know, I may be wrong, but when you call 911, 911, what's your emergency? Police medical fire, whatever. And then they put you on hold and they connect <laughs> you to the closest fire department. Right. Or police department. And can't please this line's recorded i don't hear the same thing she said to the first 911 operator why i'm hearing two different calls to two different 911 operators but i don't understand maybe i gotta hear it again i thought i heard i her... play it again i'll play it again let's play it again like i what she says to the first 911 operator right she said i don't know someone got out what'd she say i don't know someone got she says something but about the snow. Please hold, right? They put right. you on hold and they connect you. Right. Right. And 
We got a man lying on the man down on the snow or lying. On the snow. I got to hear it again. And then she, you're supposed to, you usually repeat. I, you know, if you just saw an accident, you call 911. They just saw an accident and they say, right. all right, great, hold on. And they put you on hold and they connect you to wherever you're at, closest to the right. accident. Scene. Right, of course. I don't hear that going on here. Like I hear the first 911 operator, but I don't hear the same in the second operator. I, I could be wrong. So Drew's asking, is Canton 911 dispatch regional? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, that's why it, that would make sense, but I don't know. That's that would, but I don't know. Well, let's listen again. We got time. It's fine. We'll, let's listen again. Let's let's take a hard listen at it again. <coughs> uh, okay, let me bring this up. Here we go. Those wipers are just crazy. <laughs> Um, yes, I need someone to see 34 and 6, uh, 34 here before we get mapped. So she says there's a man trapped underneath snow. No, man, she says, and this this is the problem I have with the whole thing. Karen jumps out of the back screaming, John. John. At that point, like the car wasn't even stopped. Like the she's out the back door, the car is <coughs> still rolling. So right. Jennifer, who's driving the vehicle. Is absolutely aware it's John O'Keefe in the snow. It's no one else. It's, out. it's not Fred. It's not Mary. It's not the the local drunk down the road. That's John because Karen's out there. Ten right. seconds, boom, she's there. And and Jennifer says it's a man out in the snow. She invited him there. She knew who that was. Mm -hmm. But that was the first nine one one call. There's a man passed out in the snow. Mm -hmm. Great. You want please, to get to the second part. Please hold. We're going to connect you to your 911. Right. And it should be the same. All right. Let's see. Let's listen. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I can see that. I can see I don't see blank and carry. Um, yes, I need to raise that. He's freezing. Get him up, get him up. Come on. She goes, come on. Get him up. Stop that for a second. Yep. Go go backwards a little bit. Okay. Right? Yep. I thought I heard the uh 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 <coughs> of a first responder radio. All right, Did let's listen. That? You ready? Yeah. Right there. Let's go back. I'm bump, bump, bump. I don't know if they're picking it up through the phone. Sure.
know, I know I'm on the phone with Andrew. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. I know. I know. It's like the reactions. Like, I know, I know, I know, I know. Just dismissive. Yeah, I know, I know. Just, 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 I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm on just, the phone with the ambulance. I know, I know, I know. Like, almost like the jig is up. We're going to get caught here. I know, I know, I know, I know. Just so cold. And here's Karen, hysterical. I mean, hysterical. Worst day of your life. How do you even put put that to, you can't. It's just. Absolutely hysterical. All right, let's talk about the, um, the tail light. I put together a little video here. I'm going to bring up and I'm going to release this. I want to do some commentary over it. But when I get ready to release it, I think everybody's going to really enjoy it because you're going to get to see kind of what I did here. I used Court TV's clip <clears throat> and you'll see what I did. I did kind of a split screen and uh, you, know, you can be able to, I zoomed in, which was kind of cool too. And you can kind of see what's going on. So we'll bring this up. <clears throat> now I'm going to put, it's only about a minute long, but you're going to see when she makes initial contact with the car, you're going to see. John's car move. You're going to see her car move forward. And then when she pulls out, you're going to see that her light is out in the, on the, uh, on the passenger side. So let's. Can, can, can you want, I want to, I want to see something here. Yeah. You just, see, I'll you play see. it through once and, we'll, we'll, and we'll, we can go back as many times because it's only about a minute, but I'll play it through once here and you can see what I did. I timed it perfectly, lined everything up perfectly. Bam. Bang. Perfect. 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 Yep. Then you're going to see it pull away and you'll see what I did. You can see your light on the passenger side. It's out. No kidding. Now I'm going to show the hit and I'll keep going back and then I'll slow it down. You can even see it even better. <clears throat> Watch the car move. Bam. We'll go back. You can see John's car move forward right here. Bam. Perfectly in line right there where the light would meet the light or the back of his car. What, Perfect. what, what she hits, okay? She hits John on the back of the window of John's vehicle. Right there. She hits his third brake, his... um. His windshield wiper. He said yeah. a wiper. Was a wiper the right there. Right. So the wiper is what pops the, the um, piece of the tail light out. You're absolutely. And I measured those to myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want dead balls on. Yeah. If they match, that's dead on. You're absolutely right on the money with that. And that's what she hit was his light. And I'm trying to find out. See the back of his his um where the light would be. I can't see a good picture after the hit. I don't mm -hmm. know if that, that moved the snow. Sometimes like snow will move right. down. Like if you hit it hard enough, right. it'll kind of fall down. So what I'm going to do is at some point over the next couple of days, I'm going to commentate over this just so everybody gets, you know, if they're coming first to the case thing. What the fuck is this guy doing? He's looking at back in our videos, but look at, look, look at the snow in the driveway. Cause that's the amount of snow that was on John O'Keefe right. that that's day. Probably three right or four there. inches. I'd and that, that's what fell all night long. So, like an hour before this, or two hours before this, there was very <clears> little, little snow on the ground. So everybody that was in that house would have been able to see Mr. O'Keefe leaving. There's no way he was buried under the snow, right. like they said. That's impossible. <sighs> yeah. All right. Let's let's play this, and I'll we'll, now we'll show the car, her, Karen pulling away, and you're going to be able to see the 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 light is out. This is awesome. Thanks. I worked on it this afternoon. <laughs> I was like, I got to get this ready for Tom. When I have tur turtle, uh, Aiden's going to join me on the 20th. I'm going to pull this up so he can see it too. Uh, and uh, I think he'll find some really good value in this as well too. And I timed it perfect here. And you can see. Right there. Right there. Bang. Yep. See it? And it even watch when it pulls up a little further, you can see it illuminate. Right there, bang. Yep, right Fully there. illuminated Look on it. the driver's side. Yep. Passenger side right here. Right Knocked out. Perfect. Yep. 
you can still see it right there. Look, fully illuminated here on the driver's side, the left hand side of the car, fully illuminated right here. You can see where it's out. It's missing. That's right. That one little piece right there. Yep. Look at, bang. Look at Tom. You yeah. fucking see it right there too. And do you know why that's all still working? It's because those are all LED bulbs. Yep. They're all individual. So, yep. She popped off those uh, on that strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it all the way through so everybody can kind of see it in real time and it doesn't have the drop boxes here. Hang on. So we'll watch the whole drive out in real time now. You can still see the driver's side still illuminated there. And this would be, this is what it would look like all together. And you can see right up here. Watch the car move. Bang, you know, right there. And her car moves forward. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Right there. You can it, see her car move forward. Perfect. <laughs> and it's not even snowing as hard as you think it is. No. Here. It's those light, real, real light, light snow right now that's just flowing around. It's looking worse than it is. So we'll play it again so everybody can see it. Yeah, that car moved a lot. A lot. I'm going to actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, bring it down double time here. Let me bring it down to about 50%. You'll be able to see a little bit more here. Slow it down just a little bit. Bang, right there. You can see her car move forward right here. Yep. And that's how she knew she hit something. Now, have you been to this, to One Meadows Ave? I haven't. You want you want a tight driveway? Yeah. That's so tight. You, I couldn't, I don't, I don't think I could, could have gotten out of there. And right there, bang, look at this. Perfect. The light. Okay. On both pit, on both images, you, you can even see it in the run on the right. And here too, yeah. out. Yep, father fully away. illuminated. Wow, right there. So look. that, so <laughs> look, it's right there. <laughs> you can see it. So, <laughs> is is that the murder weapon? That little sliver now is that? Yeah. Turns That's into now that one. what it was, and it's it's funny how uh, magic red fairy dust gets sprinkled all over the place, right? You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah, because they're sprinkling it where it shouldn't be. Yet again, they're putting the pieces on the grass. She never jumped the curb, the same curb that Aiden hit. Well, <laughs> it's still there in the winter, like she would have had to jump over it with her vehicle in reverse at twenty-four miles an hour. You know, 24.2, Tom, get it right. You bone Luke Duke out the window and stuff. <laughs> Yeehaw. You know, tearing up the grass, two wheels, the whole nine yards. She's got that going on. Unreal. I, I, I don't understand <clears throat> that they think we, we're we going to allow this to be a factual thing. Like, <clears throat> she, This is where the damaged hap right here. But wait a minute. What, what don't we see right here? What don't we see? Because it's five o'clock here, right? right? No, no, it's um quarter of I think. Because she got to, she got to. Jen and Kelly is at five, right? See the car move like that. But time out. Wait a minute. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You, you're gonna love this one, dude. Mary said it was about five. Right there. With the amount of damage that's in the back of that vehicle, she would have already had to murder him. Yeah. Okay? And his blood would have been underneath the vehicle and it would have dripped on the garage floor. So there'd be a puddle of water and blood underneath the vehicle when that snow melted when she pulled in originally. Am I wrong? No, right. that, no, that, that, that would be the theory. And all that blood and everything, it should be on the the, the floor of the garage. Right. It would have melted and brought it, and there's your factual evidence. They never got any of that evidence. Not one bit. So what was the hair that, that we heard about? The hair now. What's that? 
Well, <clears throat> I like how you just laugh. <laughs> Useless information. Here we go. All right. She bought Hold it up. No, it's like a hundred and forty thousand dollar rig. So when you buy it, they give you a snow brush to use because it's horse hair. So it doesn't mm -hmm. scratch the or the clear coat on that paint. Because when you lease it, it's not your vehicle, it's their vehicle. They want it back in just the same condition. And with black, the swirl marks and all that stuff is a horror show. Yeah. To get, you know, so they give you a really good high quality horse hair snow brush so you don't scratch the paint and that's what she had when she cleaned the snow off of her car so yeah it's what they found stuck to the side of her vehicle horse hair so it wasn't hair it just wasn't human and it's funny the lady who tested the hair failed her competency exas test on whether or not <laughs> testing <it> hairs <laughs> <laughs> what was the um I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the swabs on John's arms. Wasn't there supposedly some swabs, some DNA swabs, and those turned up missing now? Or did we find them? They're gone. Well, last I've heard, they're gone. <laughs> missing. Because I think when you take the swab, it has Back to, to be... this turtle here. <laughs> <laughs> they're hibernating this time of year. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure once you take the swab, you have to... You have to Enter it into evidence, and then it has to go into a cryogenic freezer right. so that it can break down from that point on. So that comes back to the lab, taking evidence yet again. And always the, happens at the fucking lab, doesn't it? It always goes missing at the lab. They'll never blame Lally. They won't blame the judge. Right. And sure won't blame the the life coach, Michael Proctor. He's coaching right. Jen Abe on how to handle us grifters. Yeah, we're the ones that are grifting. <laughs> All right, Tom. So where do you see this going? We have Karen's uh, case in March. Um, how are you feeling about things here? I, I think, I mean, personally, if I was just even a new set of eyes looking at this case for the first time, I, as a juror, and and let's just say that's the evidence package and mine's pretty fucking lame, but I'm just saying, that, you know, that's the evidence package that we see. I mean, even under a layman's eye, I'd say, well, there's got to be something here that doesn't, you know, it doesn't doesn't add up. There's there's just there's a few. <clears throat> we didn't talk about the plow driver. Lucky Lawfin. Now, the plow driver. Plowed and sanded. The roads mm -hmm. up and down those roads. He's laying down the, the salt and sand before he even puts the plow on the vehicle or he swaps it into a different truck into a plow truck from a sand <laughs> truck to a plow truck. Regardless, you know, they say that Lucky's looking out for um, like people's mailboxes and stuff like that. And, and I, I'll give you, he is right. But before I was a police officer, I tried a couple different things. I tried excavation business. It didn't work out. I tried this. It didn't work out. And one of the things I tried to do was plow for people. And ended up plowing for a town. And you know what you're not really worried about is mailboxes. You don't care about the mailboxes. And the hydrants are off the street. You know what you're really concerned about are the freaking storm drains and the manhole covers. Yeah. They will stop your truck. Oh, and, yeah. and you will hit that steering wheel and you'll never do it again. You won't forget where that manhole cover is. Have I'm you done it before, Tom? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> On someone else's vehicle, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's just broken. <clears throat> so the, the plow guy, people don't realize how attentive that person has to be when he's actually pushing snow with that piece of metal <clears throat> on the truck. You're really... You're on edge because you don't know what's going to hit. You know, all of a sudden, bang, it's a manhole cover or boom, it's the, it's the grate or you know, it's, you're riding the edge so much. He would have seen the body if it was out there. Right. No doubt about in my mind because he's sitting up so much higher and the lighting that he uses is so much far superior than any vehicle that you have. Very, like an SUV that no, these trucks have like industrial light. To see everything is they light right. up. Yep. 
So he would have seen him. And when Lucky says he can't get back down that street to plow because there's a foot edge in his way, I believe mm. him. I believe him. Yeah, I definitely believe him. They tried snuffing him out, too. They tried getting him to shut up, right? Yeah. They, they were going to blame the plow driver. And this whole thing, was it, that's what the whole deal was. Blame the plow driver. And that, again, would we be talking about this? Because these, these injuries are a little more viable by a plow. Right. If we just take it on that. Of course. You alone. 100%. Driving straight ahead. Boom. Got nailed. It would match everything. The trajectory would throw, you know, maybe throw nope. them up in the air over the snowbank. Nobody's nobody seen nothing. Whatever. Right. right? So what what else do you, you think, Tom? Um, You said a couple well, of things. I, I think. All right. First, I think. I think Karen just. I think she gets. She she gets. She's innocent. So 100%. I don't. I don't think she gets to trial. I don't think that whole case gets to trial. Mm -hmm. If it did, the state would be opening themselves up to such ridicule on on every fact. And, and I'm not talking a couple here and there. The whole case. It would be a field day. I mean, you, th this is a softball pitch to a to a major league pitcher at bat. It just ain't. Yeah. It's gone. There's a lot of reasonable doubt in this case. A shit ton of reasonable doubt. I knew that from the first dream that I did a, did about this a couple months ago. I mean, when I started peeling back the onion layers, I'm like, wait a minute, something's not adding up here. And for me, it was the 62 feet at 24.2 miles an hour and all those conditions. I'm like, there's no fucking way. I'm a New Englander. I was born and raised in Massachusetts. I know right. these roads. I know driving in snow. I mean, yep. it's not like someone that's looking at this case from Florida. You know, like we know, we know what we can are capable to do here in, in nor'easters and blizzards. I'm telling you. And, and, I'm, and just, I'm, I'm there's no fucking way. It lines up. It all lines up. So, so Karen, I, I don't have as much worry for Karen now as I do for Aiden. Mm -hmm. Only for the fact that with <coughs> what they're charging Aiden on is even more of a stretch than what they're charging Karen on. Mm -hmm. So so if I made a sentence, the cow jumped over the moon, and, you know, they're going to take the cow and then the moon, and they're going to insert that Aiden stole the cow, that, that now there's no moon. <laughs> because that's what they're doing with, with what they're charging him with. Conspiracy? I mean, really? I hope, I hope to God... They can use the conspiracy charges on the same people who did this when Karen fo is found innocent. Because mm -hmm. when she's found innocent, when that day does happen, well, you don't think people are going to want to know who killed John O'Keefe? Because I want to know who killed John O'Keefe. I know it wasn't Karen. 100%. So when, she, when, you, when you're done using that excuse, who's next? Yeah. Right? Because yeah. when they, if, were they going to put Colin up there? Well, guess what? What if it wasn't Colin? What if it was Jennifer? What if it was someone that was in that house that we don't even know about yet? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, how many people were inside? We don't even know the answer to that question. Yeah, we don't know the full answer. How do we know Ryan Nagel didn't hurt John? Hit him over the head with something and then run him over with the truck. We don't know that. Right. Right? We know as a fact that, well, that couldn't have happened. But, what do you what do you think comes out of this DOG pro, DO, DOJ probe? You think anything comes out of it? I hope so. I and you know I really do. I I don't think the FBI takes losing cases. I don't see it happening. Yeah. In order in order to get the funds to open an investigation, you need to come with some pretty hard and heavy stuff. And if you're gonna come and open an investigation into corruption. In Massachusetts, yeah, you, you better have it all friggin' blind and dotted, and it better be wrapped, wrapped, you know, wrapped up real nice because, you know, you get one crack at this in the state, and if if you lose, think oh, of the geez. FBI guy whose head's on the line if if this, the FBI probe comes back with nothing, right? Yeah, like they don't sign on to losing cases. The FBI doesn't have no, they win.
It's funny you say that because I'm following a case here on my channel right now with a, a YouTube, well, a, a watch dealer turned YouTuber, and he is accused of uh, mail and wire fraud, and he had it, he had stolen set uh, 4.7 million. The charges right now 4.7 million dollars of customers' money, and uh, essentially what he was doing was a, it was essentially a Ponzi, an alleged Ponzi scheme where he was taking customer's inventory, selling it, taking the funds for himself, and then he would someone would say, hey, where's my money? Well, I don't have any money right now, but I'll give you this this watch of some value. Take right. this and I'll don't, and he's just shell game and everything. And it's funny, you just said you made that comment. The FBI doesn't take on losing cases. And this guy is facing 220 years right now under 11 counts. And they're probably hoping, and it's actually his hearing was today, uh, they're probably hoping, <laughs> hey buddy, you're facing 220. Uh, if you plead a, to just one charge, you know, yep. maybe we knock it down to, you know, 15 years or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'll be curious to see what's going to happen. But you're right. You know, they don't take losing cases. So, they usually have the goods. <clears throat> and with the Cant 9, I, I can only pray that they get the same type of representation that Aiden has. Because his lawyer is just crazy awesome. Yeah. You know? Yes. I, Clara. Clara says, I'm more worried about Aiden, too, only because the law they're using to charge him is actually what's unconstitutional. Technically, he broke the law. The problem is that the law shouldn't exist. It's overly yeah. broad. Correct. So yeah. by, by definition, <clears throat> he broke the law. But but give me the definition. And it's so overly broad. It can it can title anything. You know, we, we know what this is. It, it's about it's about suppression. It's about taking away our First Amendment rights. You know, look what they're trying to do to these people out in Canton for peacefully protesting. You know, they're all been charged now. They're facing that. It's just a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of garbage. I spoke to one of the one of the Canton nine tonight, and all he did was show up. It's a Karen Reed shirt on. That's it. So again, if you're not behind the Canton nine, then you can't be behind Aiden. Because they're banging him the same way they're yeah. banging on them, right? And isn't one of them a minor too? It was a minor yeah, kid seventeen involved? years old? I mean, come on now, right? And so what they're doing to the kid nine, they're doing to Aiden, which is what they're doing to Karen. And, and it's just different levels of of bullshit. I want to say. You now know? let me ask you: When you go out to these, you know, these rallies, these free Karen Reed Turtle Boy rallies, do, are you feeling that people are nervous that they could be? You know, they could come in and, and have some of these similar charges against them, too. Or are they are they not nervous and they're just out there, you know, supporting no matter what? You, you get both sides of the fence. Hmm. You, you get people who who are nervous. And I've seen I've seen a, a the tone change with yeah. the people. I have seen that. They're more cautious. You know, they're not as willing to go here, there. Um, but at the same time, I see people that are like, they're going to lock me up because this is, this is right. This is wrong. And you know, you're asking someone with somebody from Boston with an opinion to not have that opinion. They're going to come twice as hard with that opinion. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Who are you Right. So, yeah. so for people to, to say that you're on the wrong side of the fence, you know, I'm not sure that's even the, the right call. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Um, when is, I see if we can get a couple court dates here, if you know. I just don't know off the top of my head. Do you know when Aiden's next court date is? <clears throat> Let me just take a peek It's here. soon, isn't it? It's coming up soon. Well, no. Last I heard, um, Aiden's lawyer was talking to the special prosecutor, Mr. Mello, and they that had fucking guy. They come to an agreement that nothing was going to happen until after the grand jury or the Supreme Court or something to do with they were going to kick it up the chain. Yeah. But that was a lie. <laughs> so Aiden's lawyer has to go back and say, when are we going to schedule this to happen? So he's in limbo right now, which is kind of good based on what he said the other night. The longer he goes, the more time that the federal investigation gets to go through its course and he can say, Hey, the people that are under federal federal investigation are the same people that are saying I broke the law. Right. So that the, again, the longer it, it works for him, the better. 
Um, the 17th at one o'clock is very important. This Sunday, it's extremely important. Yep. That, um, we're having a, like a march for the First Amendment. Back to what I was saying to the people. Um, we made an agreement with the uh, <laughs> chief of police of Canton. She's not going to arrest anybody. She's That's not going to. She's not going to have her, the cameras out. No one's going to get in trouble for coming out and, and voicing their First Amendment. She was part of making the, the parade route, we'll call it. She's part of the staging areas, the parking areas. She opened up the bathrooms to us. So she's willing and open to us doing this. So anyone that wants to come down Sunday, please do. It's happening at 1 o'clock. It's in Canton, 92 Pleasant Street. It's going to be from there to the police station. Um, that's going to be a great time. Great time. Okay. And then um, I'm also going to drop Tom's link in the chat too. Please go over and give him a sub. He's, he's all things Karen Reed. So I want to have him over here. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a great guy. I've met him in person. We spent some time together outside the courthouse. Uh, was, I, I'm going to tell you, Tom, it was my first time out there meeting any of the Karen supporters, the, the, the turtle boy supporters. I couldn't be welcomed more with open arms like people just knew who i was right away. oh my god that's brian from ltl and everybody was so nice to me such a great lovely group of people you know hard working um you know bostonians that get out there and, and just really want to stand up for their rights and that's who we are as people when we see something that's broken and something that's that's not right we're going to call your shit out and then we want answers we want the right answers Every person I've met so far is exactly as you just said. And it doesn't matter what protest I go to or what stand out. It doesn't matter. They're all just fabulous, just mm -hmm. straight up gods, all great people. And we see but, all, I saw all walks of life there supporting, you know, different awesome. backgrounds, creed, races, religions. I mean, everybody's out there together in a group and, um, you know, just really, really, really cool stuff. So great, great activism. And, you know, we got to, we got to stand up. For our communities, you know, and I always say this too, Tom, you know, and I, and I think you're going to agree here, you know, and I was said this last time and carry uh, I'll get to the, the, the memberships in a, a moment. Let me just make this point. I think people, when it comes to our elections, I think people look on the national scale. They always worry about the president. Okay. And I always say this, the people that you have to worry about are the constituents in your community, the people that are running your community, your towns, your, your, you know, your, your, your school committees, those are the most important people. Fuck the national election. That's always going to get all fucked up. That's just a big clusterfuck to fuck you all up in life. But you got to go out and vote. You got to go out and vote for the constituents in your area. That's the most important thing. So when your mayors come up, your school boards, your police review boards, your, your district uh, leaders, go out and find out who these people really are. And, and just, you know, and, and look into them. Do they have a shady history? Uh, have they given handouts before? Anything like that. You know, as much as hard you look at the president, look at the person that's going to be running your community because you have to live with them. You got to live with them. It, like I think is, I think everyone should have to serve on, like, a, you should be a selectman, be on the plan, planning board, the conservation commission, uh, zoning commission. You should know how all your parts of your community work together. You have parts of the community that are zoned business, some are residential, some are mixed use, and then you have, you know, environmental that makes sure that none of these people go through the wetlands and preserves what we have for land and whatnot. So everyone should be involved because all politics is local. It's all important. That one vote that you've cast is important to the guy in the local race. It's not important to the president. That's already been, that's already yeah. been, that, that's three or four dinners ago. It was already decided. Right. You know, that one vote means more to the, to the person running to do your neighbor to do good for the people in the same place that you live. Right. That's it's, of, and that's the thing is that this type of stuff like this gets glazed over so much. And then you're just you're getting the same people over and over and over again. But then everybody bitches and they go, well, I don't like the way this is ran this way because you don't go out and vote in your local elections. It's very important. I feel like Donald Trump right now. You don't go out in your local. Elect you got to go out and vote these people out if they're if they're giving you, you know, if they're not doing anything productive for your community, if they're fucking things up, get them out of there. Stop voting these people in because they're not here to help you. Look at the situation. It's the, you know, I always say it's the definition of insanity. Okay. If it's the same thing over and over again, and we're not getting anything fixed here. Let's probably try that person over here, you know, give them a try. 
it's, it's been 250 years since the last tea party. I mean, I think something's got to <laughs> frustration levels getting through going through the roof. Maybe we need a stage one in Canton. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, th thank you for that. And um, again, anyone that's listening, you buy this guy a coffee. He does a lot of work for the, for the people that are out here to give you uh, some good content. So a cup of coffee would be appreciated. Appreciate it, Tom. No, yeah. my, my pleasure. So what do we have an exact court date in March for Karen's trial? Do you know the exact court date? I have, I have two dates. All right. I have February 15th. It's the final pre-trial pre hearing for Karen's case. Mm -hmm. okay, and then on the 26th, there's court. It's the last day before, I think, jury selection on that. And then the actual court date is the 12th of March. Mm. So I will be there. Think about it. Christmas comes, boom, New Year's, we're already yep. middle, we'll be in the middle of January. Next thing you, next blink of an eye, we're there in the middle of January. Middle of February, middle of March, we're there. That's two. That's two quick months. A lot's gonna happen from now till then to get Aiden, to get the Canton Nine, and to get Karen off the hook. Mm -hmm. We have to get all these people off the hook. A lot's gonna happen from now until then. Two months, and then you got the DOG DOJ probe as well too. That's going on. So it's been going on for a long. Yeah. Time. So yeah. if that drops in what the beginning of the year, you, you got hope. There's hope. There's a lot of hope. Have to see what happens. All right, Tom, before we wrap this up, any last thing that you want to uh, call out or promote, please do. I've dropped your link a couple times in the chat. Go over and give Tom a sub. He live streams a lot. He's out at the, the rallies and the events for Karen and Turtle Boy. Um, I'm sure I'm going to see him out there at some of these court dates when I go out to support. And indefinitely, I'll be out there in March supporting Karen every day uh, as, as much as I can, barring work and stuff like that, but trying to get out as much as I can uh, for her court dates. Anything you want to plug, Tom, or any anywhere that people can find you? or um, Tom, CPU. Um, I had a good discussion with the Broken Baker. Have you? Yeah, I saw that. Yep. We, we get into it pretty good there. So. The people that don't know, like the in the weed stuff, good good place to get some information there. You got some new subs. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank I appreciate every single person that subscribes. I I deeply appreciate it. Yeah, he's, Tom's a good guy. We we spent some time together outside the courthouse and talked. And I, like I said, I mean, I just it's completely open arms community from all walks of life old young you know black white eight whatever it was just everybody was there we're all hanging out and it's all in support of uh turtle boy and karen and and really get, getting this movement going um i know definitely this is something that i'm going to be diving deeper into uh, a lot more here to support the case and get the facts and the truth out here on ltl because that's what we do we we take the legal documents and we take the facts and we put the facts out there and we do things, you know, in the good name of these victims. And and the thing that I I, I want to say here is, uh, you know, there's a lot of victim bashing, community bashing uh, that's that goes on in these cases. I, I see it a lot in in uh, the Idaho four murder case that, you know, people are these students are brutally murdered and people make these disgusting videos about these people and say that it's all their fault. And it's just, I don't it, get that. I don't, that just blows my mind. How, who asked to be murdered? Like, you know, I don't, it doesn't, what's wrong with these people? Right. And we see it here in this case as well. And, uh, you know, we're here to set the record straight, to keep the record straight, to get that audit of the Canton Police Department and start, um, you know, getting the truth. We need the truth here. We know the truth, but it needs to come out legally. It needs to come out legally. So, um, all right. I think that's going to wrap up the show here. I appreciate everybody this evening for checking in uh, with us. I hope you subscribed, like, share, and uh, go over and give Tom's channel a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Um, there's a great group on Facebook. It's uh, the Karen Reed, John O'Keefe. You can Turtle find Boy it. Official. Turtle Boy Official. Yep. Get into that group if you like all things uh, Karen Reed and the support and there's amazing. I appreciate whoever runs that group. Thank you so much for allowing me to post in there, put up my videos. I appreciate it. And I will get the, uh, the video that I showed here tonight 
of Karen backing up uh, online. I want to do some commentary over it, yep. and uh, I'll definitely get that out. So, uh, Tom, thank you so much for your time. Let's do My this pleasure. again. Anytime, anytime. My pleasure. All My right, pleasure. let's let's do it again. All right, I'm gonna hit the outro. Can you stick around a little bit backstage? Or yep. all right, all right, cool. I'm gonna hit the outro. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all the donations that came in through Buy Me a Coffee, Carrie. My top, my, if you don't know Tom, Carrie is my assistant. She helps me a lot on public records requests and free information, information acts. She's been killing it lately with a lot of the cases we've been covering. Uh, we're getting the truth out about a, uh, a fallen soldier that uh, got uh, shot out in Pullman, Washington. We're starting to bring that case to light where this, and I said Idaho 4, uh, this uh, Purple Heart recipient, recipient was uh, shot and killed uh, by police in a, a terrible situation and had been uh, blamed in the Idaho four murders and has absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, the person that of interest is in custody has been in jail for the last year, but can, people continue to make videos about uh, Brent Kopaka smearing his name um, and, and, uh, saying that he's responsible for this and we're gonna, we're gonna do the whole case we're putting out there. I just dropped two body cam footage videos and we have 200 hours of video that will be coming to us. Uh, and we have the full case file and, wow. uh, I'm going to set the record straight about Brent Kopaka. So nice. Can't wait for that one. That's what we do here. That's what we do here. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate everybody and women. I would say that guys, it's just a general term, but thank you ladies and gentlemen for hanging out. I'm Brian LTL Podcast, Tom CPU. We'll have him back on the show soon. And Glara, if you're still in the chat, we're going to do something here soon because I know uh, we can have a good one. And maybe we can have like a four panel, me, have me, you, Aiden, and Glare on. It'd be great. I think that'd be really good. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. We're going to hit the outro. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great night. Bye, Tom. I'll see you soon. Bye.